Around 5000 BC, we, Homo sapiens, were genetically modified by space aliens. These aliens first landed where the river Euphrates enters the Persian Gulf. The reason is that in that area, a high concentration of what is called monatomic gold is found in the seawater. While nowadays, the highest concentration is found on the islands of Hawaii. The aliens were members of the Anunnaki Empire and were on a quest to find this metal that is supposed to enhance and repair all bodily functions and stop the body from aging. Monatomic gold is what is called a superconductive metal. Superconductivity means that if you transport, for example, electricity through a line made of this material, you would not lose any energy as a result of heat dissipation. So if you input 100% of energy, you also output 100% of energy. Now apply this principle to your brain, which is a huge sensitive electrical machine. The monatomic gold makes your neural pathways act like quantum drive superhighways. This means that all your senses will receive input optimally. In turn, these inputs will be processed optimally and those parts of your brain you don't use will become more active, so enhancing your memory, making you better understand problems, allowing you to sense evil, detecting lies, becoming telepathic and even being able to time travel in your mind by seeing the past or the future. So the Anunnaki, which is the name of the empire which includes races like the Saurian, or as they are called the Reptoids, the Argarians, or Nordics, because of their human looks, and the Greys from Zeta Reticula, were looking for monatomic gold. This involved enormous effort because it had to be extracted from seawater, or by processing it in such a way that the gold, usually in pairs of eight atoms per molecule, could be separated into individual particles. In this fashion, the monatomic elements were separated from the multi-atomic cousins. In a similar way, uranium-235 is produced. For the use as intelligent slaves, the Anunnaki took a man, let's call him Adamski, and took out a part of a rib. This is because the rib is a part of the human body that can be removed without causing too much damage, and because the rib contains bone marrow, it's a perfect source for DNA. The Anunnaki modified the DNA for a better manipulation of the humans and implanted it into a woman, let's call her Mulva. Mulva then had children with Adamski, and their children were, just like Mulva, genetically modified. These humans worked for the Anunnaki, but not a lot of humans knew about the Anunnaki. And then, for some reason, the Anunnaki disappeared. An interesting detail is that the symbol for human DNA resembles the word Ya, which is God. But surely, this is a coincidence. Now, some humans received part of the knowledge of the Anunnaki. The last known humans were the Jewish people who carried the Ark on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Before them, the Ark was in the lands of the Sumerians, Babylonians and Tibetans. This Ark, not the Ark of Noah, was known to have powers beyond human imagination. It could levitate and deliver the fire of stars, a dangerous firework-like display of power that occurred when the monatomic elements became unstable. To make them stable again, you needed to know certain secrets, and with those secrets you could preserve the Ark and thus its powers. The humans who were close to the secrets of the Ark had long and prosperous lives. The best known was Methuselah, who lived to the age of 950. Wherever the Ark is, the culture thrives, and over the centuries it moved from Jerusalem to Rome to London, and is now supposed to be in the United States of America. The Ark always moves west, 
and will always keep moving west. From the very beginning, the people who own the Ark have never given it away, and great care is given to preserve the bloodline's purity of the holders of the Ark. Renowned conspiracy theorist David Icke studied the bloodline of George W. Bush. This he traced back all the way to the Sumerians, a people who lived in the southeastern part of what is now known as Iraq, where the river Euphrates meets the Persian Gulf. The secrets of the elements of the Ark, scientifically known as Orms, orbitally rearranged monatomic elements, are nowadays hidden by secret societies that have control over society worldwide. The word Orm is the same as the Hebrew word which means the tree of life. Orms consist of eight metals. These eight metals are ruthenium, rhodium, palladium and silver, known as the light platinum group, and osmium, iridium, platinum and gold, known as the heavy platinum group. Gestation of these metals in monatomic form prolongs life and enhances and repairs bodily functions. By following what is called a wide-spectrum diet, we can provide our bodies with monatomic superconductive elements. In other words, by eating a lot of grapes, carrots, all blue and dark red fruit and vegetables, and also much other fruit, vegetables and fish. There are countless fragments of footage shot by both Russian and American astronauts which show the vast number of lights that seem to be attracted by releases of electromagnetic energies by both the Earth and man-made objects such as satellites. In Building 8 of the Johnson Space Center in Texas, the USA, high-resolution pictures taken by satellites are photoshopped each day to remove proof of aliens. In the film, The Secret NASA Transmissions, the footage, it becomes clear that astronauts have grown accustomed to these strange anomalies and that even in 2000, an unprecedented cooperation between NASA, the Russian Space Agency, and a committee of UFO experts was formed to share knowledge on this subject. To better understand this whole story, a few revelations are in place. Everything vibrates because atoms vibrate and that is because the subatomic particles are in harmonic resonance, a fancy word for vibration and keeping themselves in equilibrium. Gravity is vibration generated by the presence of mass and it can be neutralized by altering the harmonic resonance of the gravitational field. In other words, if you generate vibrations, you can alter gravity and with superconductive materials, the amount of energy needed for generating the vibrations is greatly reduced. A practical example of reducing one vibration with other vibrations is the use of anti-sound. If you instantaneously produce the exact opposite waveform that comes towards you in the form of sound, the sound will cease to exist. This is called destructive interference. One of the forms of creating anti-gravity is called auditive levitation, a method used by Tibetan monks to elevate rocks over 250 meters high and 250 meters distance. By arranging drums and trumpets extremely precisely, together with some 100 men chanting, all arranged in a precise manner, the monks, after about five minutes, could levitate a rock weighing a ton and place it exactly where they wanted it. Theorists around the world theorize that huge monuments like those of the Egyptians and Mayan people were built this way. Other examples of anti-gravity we find in the vast amount of UFO sightings. These UFO sightings are actually experiments run by governments in their search for anti-gravity propulsion. So, if the technique is known, why don't we all transport using anti-gravity propulsion? For each year of technological advance, the military 
advances 44 years. All science is merely a means to an end. The means is knowledge. The end is control. Who will be the beneficiary? What do they want? What they want is control. The establishment of a global economy which is totally predictable and can be manipulated in every sense. Ein Volk, ein Reich, ein Führer. What I am saying is that the vast majority of people is being controlled by the established upper class. I know this is like the plot of a bad movie, but stay with me for a minute. Anti-gravity exists. The ability for everyone to be a genius exists. Aliens exist, and much more efficient ways of producing energy exist. For example, the Mighty Engine, which produces the same amount of energy as a normal engine, but only using 5% of the fuel a normal engine uses. Or the PAP Engine, which without fuel, only driven by the power of zero-point energy and a small amount of noble gases, can deliver 500 horsepower for a period of 10 years. Or the Matanita machine of the Matanita commune, which has delivered 3 to 4 kilowatts out of thin air for the last 20 years. What would be the consequences for the upper class if they lose their monopolistic knowledge? What would happen to them if people would know about the secrets they're holding for us? If I don't need any more gasoline, what would happen? If I don't need any more electricity or gas, what would happen? If I don't need any more medicines from the pharmaceutical industry, what would happen? In order to ensure their powers, the upper class, some call them the Illuminati, handles a strict agenda. The agenda has the aim to prepare the world for world domination beginning in the US and Europe. According to conspiracy theorists around the world, this is what they are doing as preparation. By the way, these people are extremely smart and fanatic, extremely rich, and they have tried it before. Then, they were called the Nazis. Although what you are going to see and hear sounds very peculiar, remember that a lot of people, for instance, ex-personnel of the US and UK armed forces, have been brutally murdered for making their information public. Let's begin with 9-11, but first, a little history. What the Second World War did for the US is that it gave the country such an economic lead that it could easily grow more comfortable in its already powerful role. The industry of war gave everybody jobs and therefore everybody could start consuming. Martial aid gave Europe the economic impulse it needed. In other words, war leads to flourishing economies and leaps forward in technology. The process of transformation, even if it brings revolutionary change, is likely to be a long one aside from some catastrophic catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. These are the words of a neocon think tank whose members count people like Dick Cheney, Wolfowitz and Donald Rumsfeld. What it says is that America needs a war to transform into its next shape and 9-11 is our new Pearl Harbor. In the manipulation of people, one of the strongest weapons is to make people believe someone else did it. What I'm trying to say is that the US government is trying to make the people believe Osama did it. But did Osama do it? Did you know that six weeks before the WTC towers collapsed, the owner had a new insurance policy made up, ensuring that the owner, if the towers would collapse due to a terrorist attack, would receive the amount of $3.5 billion. The owner, because two towers went down, tried to claim two times $3.5 billion, but only received 2.2. 
What happened to building number seven? In order to control people who can be a hazard to the bad guys, the bad guys have control of a number of tools. One of these tools is the remotely operated electromagnetic frequency weapon. These use microwave, ELF, extremely low frequencies, and acoustic frequencies. <laughs> to covertly attack and harass innocent citizens. The use of frequency weapons on humans for behavioral control and murder is not new. For well over 50 years, neuroelectromagnetic frequency weapons have been perfected for their covert use in warfare. These classified non-lethal or silent weapons, as they are known in the trade, have also been perfected by experimenting on an innocent and unsuspecting public since their early development. Directing a beam of frequencies to a human can cause a series of effects. A well-known effect is ELFs causing nausea, headaches, wild racing heart without cause, sudden violent itching in different parts of the body. A frequency weapon can look like this or like this. Its shape depends on how frequencies have to be directed to the target. Did you know that the US Patent and Trademark Office holds a vast amount of patents for machines which can be used in direct or subliminal mind control systems? Here are a few. Method and System for Altering Consciousness Superimposing method and apparatus useful for subliminal messages, subliminal message generator. Enough about the frequency weapons. Check this link to learn more. You will realize that to control people, you have to know what they are communicating. So in the 1950s, the UK and USA decided to set up the world's biggest espionage network to make sure all communications between Russians and spies or allies were monitored. This system has continuously been updated since the day it became operational. The system's name is Echelon and consists of a vast network of listening posts, extremely advanced computers, an enormous number of people, dishes, and taps. Echelon's computers capture every communication via Internet, GSM, UMTS, landlines, TV and radio broadcasts, satellite communications, private, military, and diplomatic, and listens to every word. The computers work with a list of keywords and when a message contains one or more keywords the message is directed to a specialist who examines the message. If it is suspicious further action may be taken. Echelon centers are around the world but here are the best known locations. Menwith Hill, North Yorkshire, England. HARP, Remote Mind Control Computer Center, Alaska. Pine Gap, near Alice Springs, Northern Territory, Australia. Pine Gap has a complex of radomes, a huge computer room, and about 20 support buildings. The signals analysis section of the computer room is staffed exclusively by CIA and NSA analysts. Within the USA, Australia and the UK, the NSA can plug into every telephone call and message entering, leaving or transiting the country. The NSA is also constructing a network of towers up to 500 feet high, each tower at a distance of 200 miles from each other and stretching from the east to the west of the US. The network is called GWEN ground wave emergency network. This network transmits very low frequencies combined with ultra high frequencies 
and is used in case the communication systems in the US are rendered useless because of a nuclear attack. Coincidentally, the frequencies of Gwen coincide with the frequencies being used by frequency weapons. Also coincidental is the fact that mobile telephone systems like GSM and UMTS also operate in the same frequency areas as some frequency weapons. To further prepare for global domination, the secret US government led by the corrupt holders of the Ark, also known as the Illuminati, or the New Global Union, or the New World Order, or just plain Nazis using the Eye of Lucifer as their symbol, has started building since the 1940s large underground bases with every commodity you can think of. These bases are basically large cities underground connected by high-speed magneto-leviton trains that have speeds up to Mach 2. According to Phil Schneider, the black budget is a secret budget that garners 25% of the gross national product of the United States. The black budget currently consumes trillions of dollars per year. Presently, there are over 129 deep underground military bases, or DUMS, in the United States. These underground bases were built using nuclear-powered laser drills that can drill seven miles per day. Also, dedicated nuclear explosions were held to create large underground spaces. A lot of contractors work in these places, but never more than three to four weeks always under strict supervision, and before entering a site, they are warned that if they talk about what they see, it will cost them their lives. As mentioned, men are the result of a genetic modification by space aliens. These aliens have been on Earth for a long time, and lived in large underground cities all over the world. Collaboration with modern governments began as early as 1933 with the Bavarian Illuminati and Thule secret societies. And this collaboration was brought into America via the CIA, which was established with the help of American Nazi agents as well as European Nazis who were brought into America through Project Paperclip and other operations. It was agreed that the aliens and the upper-class secret government would help each other, as agreed in the 1954 Griada Treaty. By 1979, the aliens didn't respect the treaty at all, and it was in this year when, at Dulce Air Force Base, a huge underground base was being built, and during excavation, an underground alien city was discovered. There are several species of aliens working with the U.S. at the Underground 7 level facility at the Alien U.S. Government Biogenetic Research Base in Dulce, New Mexico. The reason they help the U.S. Government is because the aliens need space here on Earth for conducting experiments on humans and storing humans in suspended states for reasons unknown. In exchange, the aliens give the U.S. Government technology. Examples of these technologies are stealth aircraft, anti-gravity propulsion, genetic research, quantum technologies, computer technology, biological warfare, medicine, GSM, etc. The greatest weapon the devil has is the disbelief people have in him. The devil represents evil, and those who want to dominate are the evil ones because they keep their knowledge from saving lives and improving the world. Instead, the evil ones will make the people more docile and stupid, using more tricks in order to achieve their goal, which is world and universal domination. The story of the aliens seems so unreal that, like the devil, it is subject to ignorance and ridicule, and that is its greatest weapon. In the past and present, the evil ones have tried a number of methods and products to manipulate people. AIDS, 
Invented by a laboratory in Chicago, Illinois in 1972, it was a biological weapon to be used against the people of the United States. Second, the US government has a Tesla device to generate earthquakes. NASA only landed on the moon once. Almost 90% of drugs trafficking is organized by the biggest secret services in the world, like CIA, NSA, MI5, MI6, and so on. Since the US is in Afghanistan, poppy production has reached an all-time high, and never has there been so much heroin on the market. People who don't need drugs needn't worry. Their needs are covered by the pharmaceutical industry. The global warming story is a hoax. The Earth is warming up, but not as a result of CO2 produced by man, but because the cycle of the Earth is just like it is. Remember that 10,000 years ago, the whole northern part of the world was covered in ice. It's what we call an ice age. The Ark, in its recent form, started its journey in the deserts of Egypt and was carried to the Holy Land by the Jewish people. In Jerusalem, the Ark started its journey around the world heading west. Everywhere the Ark has been, one or more obelisks are erected as a symbol of establishment. In the future, the Ark will travel to China, Russia, Iran, until it reaches Jerusalem again, which means the whole world will be under the influence of Lucifer's eye. That will be the moment the Anunnaki Empire will settle and rule Earth uncovertly. On many important sites in the world, buildings carrying symbols of Lucifer's return are common. The best known example is the Pentagon, which suggests a pentagram referring to the Jewish symbolism and the symbolism of the Ark. Another example is the Israeli High Court. It's a building with dozens of satanic and secret symbols. Like the Eye of Lucifer, an inverted cross you can walk on, its numerical anomalies. It was built in exactly 750 days used exactly 250,000 stones, all hand-laid, and was funded by the Rothschilds, the founders of the central banks and the World Bank. These buildings celebrate the coming of and will serve as headquarters for the evil ones. From here, every communication will be monitored. The underground cities will then be used as detention camps where the bodies of resistance people will be converted into soulless zombies. The army of the NWO and its intelligence agencies will be able to track and trace everybody on earth and influence their opinions or simply dispose of them. Socially, everybody will be watched by their neighbors and friends and mobbed if they have different opinions. The rich, richer and smarter, the poor, poorer and dumber will support the pyramid with Lucifer's eye on top as it has always been. This will be the future and the future is now.
like the Saurian, or as they are called the Reptoids, the Argarians, or Nordics, because of their human looks, and the Greys from Zeta Reticula, were looking for monatomic gold. This involved enormous effort, because it had to be extracted from seawater, or by processing it in such a way that the gold, usually in pairs of eight atoms per molecule, could be separated into individual particles. In this fashion, the monatomic elements were separated from the multi-atomic cousins. In a similar way, uranium-235 is produced. For the use as intelligent slaves, the Anunnaki took a man, let's call him Adamski, and took out a part of a rib. This is because the rib is a part of the human body that can be removed without causing too much damage, and because the rib contains bone marrow, it's a perfect source for DNA. The Anunnaki modified the DNA for a better manipulation of the humans and implanted it into a woman. Let's call her Mulva. Mulva then had children with Adamski, and their children were, just like Mulva, genetically modified. These humans worked for the Anunnaki, but not a lot of humans knew about the Anunnaki. And then, for some reason, the Anunnaki disappeared. An interesting detail is that the symbol for human DNA resembles the word Ya, which is God. But surely, this is a coincidence. Now, some humans received part of the knowledge of the Anunnaki. The last known humans were the Jewish people who carried the Ark on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Before them, the Ark was in the lands of the Sumerians, Babylonians, and Tibetans. This Ark, not the Ark of Noah, was known to have powers beyond human imagination. It could levitate and deliver the fire of stars, a dangerous firework-like display of power that occurred when the monatomic elements became unstable. To make them stable again, you needed to know certain secrets, and with those secrets, you could preserve the Ark and thus its powers. The humans who were close to the secrets of the Ark had long and prosperous lives. Around 5000 BC, we, Homo sapiens, were genetically modified by space aliens. These aliens first landed where the river Euphrates enters the Persian Gulf. The reason is that in that area, a high concentration of what is called monatomic gold is found in the seawater. While nowadays, the highest concentration is found on the islands of Hawaii. The aliens were members of the Anunnaki Empire and were on a quest to find this metal that is supposed to be the best known was Methuselah, who lived to the age of 950. Wherever the Ark is, the culture thrives, and over the centuries it moved from Jerusalem to Rome to London, 
and is now supposed to be in the United States of America. The Ark always moves west and will always keep moving west. From the very beginning, the people who own the Ark have never given it away, and great care is given to preserve the bloodline's purity of the holders of the Ark. Renowned conspiracy theorist David Icke studied the bloodline of George W. Bush. This he traced back all the way to the Sumerians, a people who lived in the southeastern part of what is now known as Iraq, where the river Euphrates meets the Persian Gulf. The secrets of the elements of the Ark, scientifically known as Orms, orbitally rearranged monatomic elements, are nowadays hidden by secret societies that have control over society worldwide. The word Orm is the same as the Hebrew word which means the tree of life. Orms enhance and repair all bodily functions and stop the body from aging. Monatomic gold is what is called a superconductive metal. Superconductivity means that if you transport, for example, electricity through a line made of this material, you would not lose any energy as a result of heat dissipation. So if you input 100% of energy, you also output 100% of energy. Now apply this principle to your brain, which is a huge sensitive electrical machine. The monatomic gold makes your neural pathways act like quantum drive superhighways. This means that all your senses will receive input optimally. In turn, these inputs will be processed optimally and those parts of your brain you don't use will become more active, so enhancing your memory, making you better understand problems, allowing you to sense evil, detecting lies, becoming telepathic and even being able to time travel in your mind by seeing the past or the future. So the Anunnaki, which is the name of the empire which includes races, will become more active, so enhancing your memory, making you better understand problems, allowing you to sense evil, detecting lies, becoming telepathic and even being able to time travel in your mind by seeing the past or the future. So the Anunnaki, which is the name of the empire which includes races like the Saurian or as they are called the Reptoids, the Argarians, or Nordics, because of their human looks, and the Greys from Zeta Reticula, were looking for monatomic gold. This involved enormous effort, because it had to be extracted from seawater, or by processing it in such a way that the gold, usually in pairs of eight atoms per molecule, could be separated into individual particles. In this fashion, the monatomic elements were separated from the multi-atomic cousins. In a similar way, uranium... Now, some humans received part of the knowledge of the Anunnaki. The last known humans were the Jewish people who carried the Ark on their journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. Before them, the Ark was in the lands of the Sumerians, Babylonians and Tibetans. This Ark, not the Ark of Noah, was known to have powers beyond human imagination. It could levitate and deliver the fire of stars, a dangerous firework-like display of power that occurred when the monatomic elements became unstable. To make them stable again, you needed to know certain secrets, and with those secrets you could preserve the Ark and thus its powers. The humans who were close to the secrets of the Ark had long and prosperous lives. The best known was Methuselah, who lived to the age of 9235 is produced. For the use as intelligent slaves, the Anunnaki took a man, let's call him Adamski, and took out a part of a rib. This is because the rib is a part of the human body that can be removed without causing too much damage 
and because the rib contains bone marrow, it's a perfect source for DNA. The Anunnaki modified the DNA for a better manipulation of the humans and implanted it into a woman. Let's call her Mulva. Mulva then had children with Adamski, and their children were, just like Mulva, genetically modified. These humans worked for the Anunnaki, but not a lot of humans knew about the Anunnaki. And then, for some reason, the Anunnaki disappeared. An interesting detail is that the symbol for human DNA resembles the word Ya, which is God. But surely, this is a coincidence. Is found in the seawater. While nowadays the highest concentration is found on the islands of Hawaii. The aliens were members of the Anunnaki Empire and were on a quest to find this metal that is supposed to enhance and repair all bodily functions and stop the body from aging. Monatomic gold is what is called a superconductive metal. Superconductivity means that if you transport, for example, electricity through a line made of this material, you would not lose any energy as a result of heat dissipation. So if you input 100% of energy, you also output 100% of energy. Now apply this principle to your brain, which is a huge sensitive electrical machine. The monatomic gold makes your neural pathways act like quantum drive superhighways. This means that all your senses will receive input optimally. In turn, these inputs will be processed optimally and those parts of your brain you don't use Around 5000 BC, we, Homo sapiens, were genetically modified by space aliens. These aliens first landed where the river Euphrates enters the Persian Gulf. The reason is that in that area, a high concentration of what is called monatomic gold